let's take a look at uh, GCOC11. This is worksheet two, uh, where we start to now use the properties. So at this stage, you should know what properties a parallelogram has, what properties a rectangle has, and be able to distinguish it. Because that's really what they want out of this area. They want you to know that if I tell you the name of the shape, what you can expect uh, the innards of that shape to do, the angles, the diagonals, the side lengths, all those things. So I don't have a lot of particulars up here, but let me just show you how this works a little bit. So if you're working with a parallelogram, you would need to know what you can expect about diagonals, angles, things like that. And these, these first group here, this group of four, is what you can expect. Also, the definition of a parallelogram is opposite, two sets of opposite sides that are parallel. Now, that's not in the list, but it is a part of a parallelogram. So, I don't know, let's say they gave you a couple of angles here and said, you know, find the other angles or whatever the case may be. You would know that uh, these lines are parallel and these would be a parallel match. And so, alternate interior would help you to get to know this angle here. Alternate interior would help you to get to know this angle here. Um, maybe they want you to find other angles and so on. But again, I'm using the properties of what I know. Um, the square, the rhombus, and the rectangle all have a right angle in them. And because of that, there's always a sneaky little maneuver that happens there. I'll get to that in a second. But the square is so simple. The square is amazing in that you do not have to know a single number to get all of its angles. Um, in a square, you know that because it's a type of rectangle, these are all 90 degrees. Because it's a, oh, by the way, a square has every property in the list. Um, diagonals uh, are perpendicular, so I know that these diagonals come at 90 degrees. I know that diagonals are angle bisectors, and so uh, these are 45 and so on. And I can find everything else I wanted in there. Pretty cool stuff. Let's go to the rhombus. The rhombus is a type of parallelogram, so it holds all those characteristics. It uh, doesn't have four equal angles. Its diagonals are not congruent, but they are perpendicular, and they are uh, angle bisectors. So if we put in the diagonals, we know that they would hit at 90. If they gave us an angle like, let's say, 30 degrees here, we know that the diagonals uh, are angle bisectors, so this would also be 30. We also know because of the 90, the 30, this would be 60 and 60 and 30 and 30 and 60 and 60 and around we go. And you can see by knowing just a little bit about my shape, I find a lot of information out. Same thing can happen with a rectangle. We know uh, business about the four right angles. We know opposite sides are equal. We know a lot of those things. Again, if I was working with a rectangle, I know it has the parallelogram properties, but it would also have four equal angles and it would have diagonals that are congruent. That's a, a special one just for the square and the rectangle there. What I do want to warn you about is one, and I'll do another one here in a minute, but the thing they like to do to you about sides or diagonal lengths is to use these right angles. So they might tell you that this side's three, this one's four, and may ask for the diagonal. You got to use the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that. That's a big tip. They might do the same thing over here. They might say this is uh, five, this diagonal is six, so that would be three here and three here, and say, how big is the other diagonal? And so you might have to say, oh, the Pythagorean theorem tells me this is four, and four and four is eight. That's how big the other diagonal is. They like to play with a little bit of that Pythagorean theorem. Be aware of that on the three guys that have right angles. This is just about you getting used to the properties and using them to solve problems in algebra. I just said quickly on the board giving you some basic examples, but this is what they look like. And I'm not going to do all of these, but just to give you an idea. They're going to give you some clues. They'll let you know what shape you're looking at because you need to know that to know its properties. So, for instance, if this side uh, or this diagonal A to C is 10, 
I'm aware that uh, diagonals are uh, get cut in half. So that would make this 5 here. And that would make this 5 here as well. So this would be 5 centimeters. I'm also aware that opposite sides are parallel. And so this angle of 39 would exactly be this angle of 39 and so on. Again, using properties from the shape. Here, because it's a rhombus, I know that the diagonals intersect at 90. So that x has to be a 90 degree. I also know, this one's a little trickier, that uh, angle bisectors take place. So these have to be equal and bisected. And now I can find y because I know 62. I know 90. So this has to be 28 degrees that remains to form that triangle. And on and on and on it goes, more of the same. Um, let me do just a couple more spot checks. I see two I want to show you. One here, the rectangle has the property that the diagonals are congruent. So all four of these pieces are the same. And so this unknown x has to be also the 12 there. Now here's that fun little case that I uh, promised you about. Uh, is sometimes they use the property in a rhombus. We know that this is a right angle. Diagonals bisect perpendicularly. And I can do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And so I can find that using the Pythagorean theorem and so on. Keep your eyes open for those things. And the sooner and you learn the properties, the easier these become.